Do your feet pronate? So pronation is actually a very important movement of the foot and it's critical for our ability to efficiently absorb force from the ground. But our feet also need the ability to move in the opposite direction, which is called supination, in order to efficiently push off the ground. Problems tend to arise when we get stuck in either supination or pronation and we can't move between them easily. And a major culprit for this is stiffness through the midfoot. You can test this out yourself by rotating your hips side to side and noticing what happens at your feet. If they struggle to flatten or your big toes keep lifting off, then it's a sign your midfoot probably needs some love. All right, so our feet are our foundation for movement. As bipedal animals, we spend most of our time on our feet, moving on our feet, and they are our primary connection with the ground. So that means they need to be able to both absorb force from the ground and also transfer force into the ground. And in order to perform both of those roles efficiently, they need to be able to change shape. So the joints in the foot, there's 33 joints in each foot, um, but all of these joints basically, especially up through here, need to be able to unlock and become, and that allows the foot to become like a mobile adapter. And that movement that you're seeing there is called pronation. And they also need to be able to sort of twist back and lock back up into a movement called supination in order to then become a rigid lever. The foot will then tr um, transform from a mobile adapter to a rigid lever so that you can then put force into the ground and propel yourself while you're walking, running, jumping, etc. So very brief anatomy physiology lesson. Your foot is broken up into the rear foot, the midfoot and the forefoot. And all of those areas of the foot should contribute somewhat to pronation and supination, those twisting movements. And problems will arise if you either can't pro pronate effectively, and that will end up putting more stress on the sort of hard tissues, the bones and the joints, or if you can't supinate effectively and you're sort of stuck in pronation, then that will put more stress and strain on the soft tissues, so the muscles and the fascia and so on. So being able to move between those efficiently, between, uh, change shapes efficiently while you're moving allows you to spread that load between the hard tissues and the soft tissues. So pronation and supination are both very normal and necessary movements of the foot, but if you're excessively going into one of those movements without being able to transfer into the other, you'll end up with issues. And the timing of the pronation matters a lot, as well as the control, how fast you're doing it or how controlled that movement is as you pronate. Now, all of that gets fairly technical to assess, but there is a very common dysfunction or issue which is stiffness through the midfoot, which will predispose you to having issues with that um, mobility or that control or that efficiency in general. So one simple test that you can do at home to assess that on yourself is to stand about feet, feet with about hip width apart, and then you're just rotating your hips to one side as far as you can, but you're trying to keep the big toe down and then rotating to the other side. Now as you do this, you should see that one side lifts. You can see here one side pushing up into that supination or that arch lifted position as the other side flattens. So this is kind of an important point here, which is that your hips play a role in how much pronation and supination you're able to achieve. But for now, we'll just focus on the foot itself. Now, as you rotate, if you're lifting that big toe, that's a sign that you don't have enough supination in that midfoot or enough mobility in that midfoot or potentially through the forefoot. But basically, you're not getting a, a, enough differentiated movement between the midfoot and the forefoot, which lifts that big toe. And then vice versa, as you go to the other side, if you're really struggling to flatten, you're, doing, you're rotating your hips, but these aren't, uh, the foot isn't flattening down into the ground and it's staying up in this lift, lifted position, then it's likely you don't have enough pronation mobility through that midfoot. So very simple test um, and 
now we can get into a few ways that you can mobilize that yourself. So I'm going to just start down on the ground. And for this one, you only need your hands. And you'd just be gripping on your foot there, basically around your ankle, and then down at your forefoot, and then just moving, manually twisting your midfoot which is basically that same pattern of pronation, supination at the midfoot. And you're just trying to manually mobilize that to get some movements through the joints. So the idea there is that you're keeping this part still and then moving the forefoot on the midfoot in both of those directions, rotating. Another thing that I like to do here to simulate that movement is to do a human toe spreader We've done this before in the Rewild Your Toes episode, and that's actually a very important component of pronation, supination control, is the alignment of your toes, which we do talk about in that video. But this is therefore a great bang for your buck exercise or mobilization where you get your fingers as far through your toes as you can. That might just be into the tips at first, but as far through as you can, and then you can do that same mobilization. So if this is just far too intense for you, then obviously you can just go back to the midfoot mobilization where you are just holding the top. But if you can do this, you're sort of killing two birds with one stone. Obviously you'd want to do both feet, but I'll show you another way that you can mobilize with some balls. So you might want to start with a tennis ball. It's going to be softer, more gentle on the feet. We do have these cork balls, but you could also use a lacrosse ball or something similar. I'll start demonstrating with a tennis ball. And you're really just trying to get some deep pressure into the foot. And it kind of gives you a bit of leverage to push off. So you, you can see I'm going more into that supination movement there or more into that pronation movement and it's just getting a platform to both add some extra pressure and movement into these little joints all through your foot and to facilitate or encourage that pronation and supination movement. Now most people will find that a tennis ball becomes too easy or too gentle fairly quickly as your feet adapt. So that's where the cork ball or a lacrosse, lacrosse ball comes in and then you can just do that plantar release. And all we're trying to do here is build more of that mobility through the joints. You'll find the harder surface of a cork ball or a lacrosse ball does also build a fair bit of resilience through the plantar fascia and the muscles on that underside of your foot, which can be fairly intense at first, but just take it at your own pace and try to explore as much as possible. Something I like to do or build up towards is more and more of your body weight onto there to the point that you could even stand with your body weight on the ball without too much of an issue. Again, obviously you'd want to do both feet with that. And the cork ball, may not, you can do this next one with a cork ball probably going to be a lot easier to use something that's just got a bit less of a bit less height. Um, we have these mini rollers but you could also use say a golf ball, maybe a golf ball with a, a towel over it to soften the load. But really again trying to use that as a platform to promote that pronation. So as, as I move into here and my foot is blocked up here from that mini roller, as I move my ankle forward, I sort of naturally have to go into that pronation movement. You can imagine if my foot was on the ground, my arch would be flattening down like that. So that's one way to promote some of that pronation mobility. And you're just sort of stepping in different areas like that. Still again, especially with this mini roller, a great way to mobilize the outside of your foot and build some of that resilience as well. But the golf ball would do a very similar thing. 
main thing you're focusing on there is really pushing your foot into pronation and you can use the rotation of your hip to promote that as well. As long as that's not hurting your knee or your foot obviously, just gently using the knee or moving the knee in, which is internal hip rotation to promote that flattening. So that's particularly helpful if you find you're kind of stuck in that high arch supination position. And then if you're someone who's more struggles to get out of pronation and to go in the opposite direction, then this is where some specific calf raises can really help. Now a ball like the tennis ball or a cork ball is great to help facilitate the movement we're after here. You'll also want something for balance like a dowel or if you're up against a wall that's fine too. And you actually have the ball in between your heels and you're coming up into a calf raise but you're trying to essentially squeeze the ball between your heels which I'm going to exaggerate this, but that essentially gives this kind of activation there, which is, as you can see, pronation or lifting. So we don't want to lift so much or pronate so much that our toes come up like that. But if you can keep your toes on the ground, you're still pushing through your big toes and just squeeze the ball between your heels then you get a lot of that pronation, uh, sorry, supination strength, which actually is exactly how we need to move as we walk, because we go from, as we walk, we go from pronation to absorb force and then supination, which is essentially like a calf raise where our foot is locking and then pushing off. So that's what this is trying to mimic. And if you're struggling with that, it may be helpful to just play around a little bit with just doing this hip control like that at first, just to really get the idea of those movements and how to promote that supination versus how to promote that pronation. So you can do that. And this is also a great control exercise or balance exercise where if you're trying to promote the supination, you can drive your knees out, keep your big toes flat. You'll feel some of that lifting, even if it's not quite as much as you see there, you'll get some of that lifting. And then you can shift your weight over to one side and try and stand on one leg. And then you want to try and reduce how much this knee drops in. So if you're focusing on that, building up strength there and control, that will really help. But then it's important to obviously transfer that into a more dynamic exercise that relates to your gait. So plenty to work with there. Even if you just do five to 10 minutes of those exercises every day or every other day, uh, over time your mobility and your control will improve. You don't necessarily have to focus a lot on exactly all of those little movements while you're walking, taking every step. That might be too much to focus on. But usually if you restore that mobility and control, then your body will self-organize and start using those movements in while you're walking, running, jumping, etc. And you should notice that those more global activities start to feel better and more efficient as well.